joining me on part two of my 52 part series that I should hopefully wrap up by 2025. Uh, better to know a database. Um, my best impression of Stephen Colbert. Um, so part one was talking about what we mean by RDBMS databases in general. What are they for? How do they work? Some of the design aspects of putting one together. So we're going to take a bit of a, a transition and go from what we were talking about from a design standpoint to what happens when, when it's implemented. So some of the bits and pieces that go on in the background, some of it these days is largely invisible. But we're going to see some relative aspects of what it looks like in the database as opposed to what it really looks like out on a website. So, um, so everyone recalls the schema diagram that we had before. Okay? And while this isn't a direct representation, this is what we want to see in the database. We want to see a table that's got data in the table. It's in their respective rows, you know, their respective fields. Um, and then we can do work on it. Because until we get it to this point, it's just uh, a nice idea to talk about. And it doesn't really do any work until then. So we're going to get into, uh, I think, a key aspect, key, no pun intended. So. Uh, Edgar Cobb basically represented relationships through keys, and hence why there's many different memes out there that basically says the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key, so help me Cod. You know, and so in Cod we trust, we will ensure that keys are represented and they make the difference between just having a loose amount of data out there to having something that's referential and relational. All right. So um, the SQL joins, there's a number of them. We'll go through just a smattering of them. But these Venn diagrams kind of try and help you understand what they represent. So if, if A and B are two separate tables, to make them relational, there must be some key reference involved. So depending on whether you're talking about an inner join, all right, which I'm trying to read here. So your inner join is the middle one, uh, where A and B have their own separate pieces. But because of key referential uh, integrity, when you say inner, you just want to match the tables on the left with the specific rows of the tables on the right. All right, so your your left outer join or, or your your outer joins are going to involve some all of the references of one table and some of the references of another table, and it really breaks down to that level. Um, let's see. Um, why don't we just get into this? Let's see. So. <clears throat> if everyone remembers, I was talking about the, the data schema from Stack Overflow. <laughs> well, interesting enough, you can actually download the Stack Overflow database. And so I went ahead and did that. And so I'm going to go ahead and call out to a new query. All right. So this is the very basics of, of SQL in itself as a language. So. You're going to describe some action. You're going to describe whatever action that's participating with. You're going to include whatever pieces should result in that action. And then you will give some filter that's involved outside of that. So on our first action, we'll just say select. All right, so this is really basic. Probably the most basic of the queries on its own is select. Now. You're going to say, select something from. And now we can go off and go choose 
In this case, we'll use users. So that's one of the tables. We come back to this real quick. So this, these are the, the tables that are involved in this database. You got badges, comments, link types, post links, posts, post types, da 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 da, users, votes, what have you. So we want to select some stuff from users. Well, there's a shorthand when you don't really know what you want. So we can just say star. That just says everything. All, all the fields for this table and all tables that sort of, that's related to the from, everything after the from, and we'll get into what that looks like. Now we just hit F5. And this seems to take a little while. Now this is not the full database from Stack Overflow. I didn't have 355 gigs uh, available on my system, so we're using a smaller size. It's about 50 gigs. It's a good size still. Um, really only covers about five years of data, the first five years of uh, Stack Overflow data. So this is still running. Uh, it's taking a little while. Uh, so what's our end there? 2.4 million rows. It took us 30 seconds to get that. Ah, it's not exactly zippy, but there we go. This is everything that's coming off that table. It's all the fields. Now we could go off and say, just give me ID. And we have to separate fields by commas. So let's say uh, ID and display name. Now, luckily with SQL, and most SQLs have this, there's a, there's a caching element. So if it's gone off to go query a table, chances are it's kind of kept some crib notes along the way. And if it's still fresh, we should get something back fairly quickly. We'll see how fast it comes back. So we're already getting stuff back. So all we're seeing right here is the fast forwarded returns. Ah, took a third of that. So it took 12 seconds, pulled the same number of rows. All it's doing though is pulling the ID and the display. All right, no big deal. So let's, let's do a filter. And let's do a filter on display name now, with most SQL languages, the way you're going to de define a string is going to be a single quote, not a double. So this is a peculiarity of, of the language itself. So instead of double quotes, we're just going to do single. And um, we're going to look up my display name. So this, this database goes from 2008 to 2013. I joined up with uh, Stack Overflow in 2011. So, in this case, there's a lot of bishops out there. Holy cow. Well, let's see if we can get a little bit more detail. Um, there's a location. Maybe location will help. Ah, location. There's a couple of it. There's, a, there's Atlanta. There's a couple of Atlantas. Okay. So let's say location. Now, it's not described exactly the same way in both cases. So instead of saying equals, we're going to say like. This is, this is really conversational kind of coding. This is kind of how you talk. This is, this is not arbitrary notation to, to, to say what is and is not something, right? So like, and again, we have to use single quotes. And since um, in both cases, they started with Atlanta, I want to do a wild card after. So that's a percent sign in SQL. Now we've got two choices. Interesting. I happen to be in a 885317. That's me. 
<laughs> so if we say um, there is also what else is If you notice, there's a there's a blue indicator here on the name on the the title, and it's because it's probably being utilized as a keyword within SQL itself. So if you want to isolate it from being a keyword, you can do this. And then um, let's see what else what else what else is out there. Oh, bio, bio is out there, right? No. What is? Oh, about me. All right, there you go. Uh, let's run that. Okay, that's a bit, bit lengthy. All right. What does that say? Um, day job. I not only design solutions, but I also write the code for them too. Yeah, you. How do. about that? <laughs> yeah, I can do. Okay, so eight eighty five three one seven. That's me. All right. So let's let's do a different query. Um, let's do. Um, do a select. Now, there's other ways to, to pull up partial returns out of a table without having to use a where clause. One of those involves saying top. So you can say top, you can say bottom, and then it's basically trying to arrange based on where the data is, is involved in the table it'll go and pull off the top of something. Now, you could still use a where clause, and then whatever the arrangement came out of, and you say top, in this case, let's say top 20. And again, we're going to use star instead of defining the field from, all right, so we'll see how fast this comes back. It's done, not even a second, all right? Um, so top 20 rows, and if you'll notice, if those of y'all who are developers and follow some of the, the names out there, some of these names are going to sound familiar. Jeff Atwood, Joel Spolsky, John Galloway, um, these, are, these are all guys who have done all kinds of interesting stuff, and they were the founders of Stack Overflow. So, and, and what's always kind of funny is uh, a lot of them have Things like Stack Overflow valued at uh, associate yeah. zero 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 one. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, there's a couple of them that do that. But we can then take a look at details like how many views have they got, what what's their reputation inside the system. All right. But let's let's take a step back. So I mentioned that this data is relevant inside of a system. So. Let's jump out real quick. How about I spell overflow correctly? Okay. So here's my profile out here. So there's that about me again. All right. Um, so, 2011-08-09 at 6 in the morning Zulu. What the hell was I doing up at that time? I have no idea. Um, so, if we go back to this, and instead of saying display name, now we know what my ID is. the representation in the database of what's being displayed in the system itself. And that's how these end up working as systems. So all the different aspects of profiles, entries, orders, all that stuff, it has a relevance inside the system itself. But it's going to be stored a certain way in the database. 
And it's not always going to be straightforward in understanding what that is. And we'll get into some of that uh, from this point. So I mentioned we were going to talk about uh, joins. So no, not two of them, just one. Thanks. All right, so users are usually associated with posts on this site. So we'll say select. And for right now, we'll say star. We'll come back to this. We'll say from. Um, so um, I'm not going to get too far into why I'm, I'm prepending everything with DDO. We can get into that hopefully, maybe some other time. But just understand that the database is recognizing these tables with a, a DBO prefix. All right, so we'll look at posts. And um, I'm going to say enter join. So I just want the posts that match with whatever I'm about to enter join with. So in this case, I want that to be DBO users. Now, just to keep this from getting overly involved, I'm going to put a little piece here that says, so by placing this little character here, and here I'm going to place a view. So anything else I go and reference afterwards, all I have to say is p dot something instead of constantly saying posts about something. And if it was a long table name, that would get annoying too. So shorten it to something that's more or less relevant to me. It really only needs to be relevant inside of the, the query itself. So in this case, I'm going to say, I want to select everything from posts and enter join with users on p dot. And I happen to know we want the owner <coughs> user ID. So that's the relevant piece inside of the post table that says, if there's a reference to this, this goes back to who made this post in the first place. All right? So, and for you, I just need ID. All right? So I don't need to say user ID. In this case, if you did have user ID, and you could, Chances are it really was referring to something else. There is another kind of ID out there called count ID, but that's not what this is referencing. It's specifically re referencing ID. All right, and let's see, I'm where, now I'm gonna filter. You ID. Equals one. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to do here. Remember how these little characters are, are now referencing? I don't want all of the, the fields from both P and U. I just want P, but I got to separate from comma. So I'm going to say display name. All right. Now we'll run that. So this is Jeff Atwood. He's got a lot of posts. That's taking a little while. And it could take some time. They, they don't really have a lot of indexes on this. So, uh, and we'll get into what that means here in a, in a short second. But So this is all of the data from posts relevant to Jeff Atwood. And that's a joint. That specifically is an inner joint. So what does it mean to do an outer join in this particular case? An outer join is still going to bring everything, in this case, from posts. But if I say wanted a, a collection of users from, from the users table, so some of them might have posts and some of them might not. I still want posts to come back. So if I say outer, not, you know, in, in this case, um, a left outer join. So left being the first table 
this reference as opposed to the right, which would be the next table. Between two tables, there's always going to be a left and a right. In a left outer join, I'm going to say, give me all the posts. Now, if they happen to match up with users, then give me whatever additional information about the users that comes back off that. But, be but because I'm saying left outer, I'm not really giving it any kind of indication of what to do when it doesn't match up. And so the default action of what happens there is from the right side, you're going to get nulls. So it's just going to <laughs> fill up whatever those fields were that were associated with those posts with nulls. And that is the difference between those kinds of joints. You can use them for a whole bunch of different reasons, but what it boils back down to is that there is still some key referential involvement between tables throughout the database. Now, one table may not be directly associated with another, and that's when you end up having other uh, uh, indicators or other, other ways of associating data that comes down out of the hierarchy. And I uh, said a whole bunch of words that probably didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but, but we will get into some of that, all right? But this is still running, well, no, it's done now. So 143 rows. Now, let's go back to my example. Um, so eight, five, three, one, seven, all right? That's mine. By 2013, I did not have a lot of them. This is still taking a really long time to come up with the answer. I don't think I've, I've got 10 entries by 2013. And that's taking a long time to do this. So why is that? Um, we're about to get into a, another concept called indexes. So in a book, you have table of contents in the beginning, and sometimes you'll have an index in the back. Why is that the case? So you can, so you can find things, things faster. All right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference, though. Okay, so table of contents is usually ordered in what manner? Like in the order of the pages. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but an index in the back is usually alphabetical, right. So we're going to get into a little concept about what are known as clustered and non-clustered indexes. Okay. Just a quick update. Food is coming. We're just extremely late. Ah, so just cool. Like when that comes in, we'll, we'll, we'll do a yeah. pause. Yep. Not a problem. So in this book analogy, though, all right, there's really just two, right? So there's the table of contents in the front, and there's the indexes in the back. But with, with, a, with a database, though, you actually have a plethora of options. Now, with a clustered index, you can only have one on any one particular table. And it is exactly like the table of contents. It is ordered in the exact order it shows up in memory. So as it lays in storage, it goes through a structure that basically adds one right after the next, right after the next, right after the next. Whatever that key is associated with, it will go in that order. So that is the clustered index. And it makes it really, really fast if what you are searching on is going to use that index. All right, and we'll see here in a second. We're done. Seven rows. All right. Now, we have a neat little tool here that will tell us why. All right. And so, like I said, this only has clustered indexes. It doesn't have any non-clustered indexes. It came, it came right off the internet this way. So here you see it's actually saying it did an index seek. And then here it did an index scan. Clustered index scan, clustered index seek, clustered index scan. Can anyone tell me why it used a scan in one and a seek in the other? All right, well, let's take a look at the query real quick. It'll probably just pop out right at you. So like I said, clustered indexes tend to be on the ID keys. All right, so am I asking for 
IDs? Uh, am, am I giving any IDs to the post part of the query? No? No. So it can't use a seat in that case. But I am giving it a key for users. So for the users, it can do a seek. But because they are two separate tables, one doesn't necessarily directly apply to the other. So it's going to go off and go seek on the users. And if you notice, I got a little cost analysis down here that says, what did it take to do this query? And for the user, the cost was zero. But on the clustered index scan of posts, it took all the time. Yeah? Does the database uh, itself keep things ordered by ID? So it goes to look up by ID, it knows, like, OK, I have to go this far down to retrieve it. I mean, it may display it to you in a different way. But... It, that's your question. As, as uh, one guy I, I was reading about says, to any interesting question, the best answer should include, it depends. <laughs> and it depends because maintenance is always involved on a database. All right. you, you don't get very far with this technology without having some amount of maintenance involved. Part of that maintenance <coughs> is index. So there are aspects where you need to clean up indexes. Some indexes become unnecessary. Some of them have to be recalculated. So there's some maintenance that has to go into ensuring that indexes are clean and that when, like in the case of rebuilding a clustered index, then as things get put into a table you, and then something gets removed, then you get these spacings in the actual layout of where it rests on the hard drive itself where you need to clean that up to get back to your efficiency level. You can run a re-indexing job for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you've, you've got that for clustered indexes. Non-clustered indexes just have to be recalculated. Mm -hmm. So the difference there is that, and it goes back to the reason why there's only one clustered index. It can only have one physical orientation. All right? But the non-clustered index is like your index in the back of the book. It can be alphabetical. It can be whatever arrangement based on whatever fields are important for that particular table. When you see that you're querying a certain way and that that type of query is consistent, then chances are you're going to be, in, you're going to be able to improve the output by adding an index. Is uh, a clustered index by convention typically ordered by primary key of that table? Normal. Okay. Yeah. But it also goes back to what do we define as keys? So what what is a key in one case may not make sense for another. Um, I, I'm sure there's a number of examples I could find for you, but I don't have one right off the top of my head of how it would be different. That's why it's normally the primary key of a table. All right. So this is just some of the the aspects that are involved. When you're talking about SQL, this is what we're talking about. This is, this is the kind of language that we're, that, that we're dealing with. Ultimately, it is still um, um, a, a relational algebra. All right, so it's mathematical in the end. Um, and that's why also, if, if I did this same query, but I put in the filter display name, I think I was mentioning in the last class, text fields are the worst because the way SQL goes off to find out if something is equal to something else as a string, it actually is comparing each individual character. And so that slows it down even further. Um, I think I ran this before and doing that took over a minute and a half. So, um, but Luckily here it's telling me, hey, you could do a non-clustered index that would improve the output by 99%. So it's already trying to tell me what 
what's not right and wants me to go and do something right. You know, so that's that's something. Um, yeah. All right. So. Out of curiosity, did you pull the index off of that table for this example? Because <laughs> it would be hard to believe that they didn't actually index. Not only they only have clustered indexes in this table. Oh really? Okay. Uh, in, the, in the whole database, only clustered indexes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, huh? <laughs> okay. All right. So index, clustered index, non-clustered indexes. We kind of went over that. Um, this particular uh, database also doesn't have views. So. That query that I that we put together, the inner join, I can define that in uh, an object structure called a view. And all it's basically saying is when I ask for this view, utilize this query. I want the returns off of this to come back to me like a table. So views are like tables, only they're queries. So they're not normally calculated until they've been asked for, even from a from a, a, a caching standpoint. Depending on how large the data is, chances are the 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 contents of that didn't get cached. But that execution plan that I was showing you probably did. And so with the view, it tends to rise that up into the cache and hold on to it longer in case it gets asked for more more repeatedly. But it, it takes what would otherwise be complicated uh, logic and chunks it down into an easier to use form. Okay, so I could say join with this table and interjoin with this view and then use relevant keys to make the association. And it will go off and go pull up that query, run that query, and return that like it's, it, it was its own table. It does tend to be a little bit slower than regular querying to, to tables. And that's why they came up with something called index or materialized views. So there's a lot of complicated rules that end up involving that, but it basically takes the outcome of that table and stores it temporarily in a space that it can go off and go readily use. And you can go and call on to it directly. It's pretty cool stuff and, and very, very fast. And then functions is just another way of compartmentalizing logic. So let's say you want to go off and query someone's name, but to query someone's name and get it back into a consistent fashion, you've got to query last name, first name, middle initial, do they have a suffix, do they have a title? But, but let's say in, in some case, you want all of that brought back together into one conjoined, what looks like a, a, a normal you know, output, like for a mail header. So you want to return that, but you don't want to store it in the database that way. That, kind of violates the whole point of third normal form, right? So you can use functions to compartmentalize how you bring that stuff back together so that when you come back and ask for all these fields, include one line in there that says, oh, also, take all these pieces, run it through this function, and give me the output on that. Well, now you just got to go and call it function. You don't have to go and rehash out what that logic is every time. And anybody else that uses that will get any of the relevant changes that are needed to be made for that. So you get a bit of do not repeat yourself, right? So those are just some of the pieces that, that are involved um, as tools within SQL itself. Now there's a long laundry list of other pieces in here, but I really kind of felt like this gave you the, the, the biggest bang for buck on, on just what are some of the pieces that are involved inside of a SQL engine. So on the software side of things, we still have to go back and talk to the database somehow. There's got to be some sort of connectivity. There needs to be some way of, of, of stating that you want these queries run. And that's got to go through some sort of interface. And really, kind of the longest one that's been around with us is what's called ODBC, Open Database Connectivity. Um, it's been copied. It's been you know, done over and over and over again, but when it all was said and done, it is the one thing that is consistent across pretty much every language out there. Um, Microsoft has its own set, separate set of stacks. They've used OBBC as well. 
And then they came up with something called OLE, which was supposed to be an update to ODBC. That went okay. But then they went to something called ActiveX uh, data objects. And so that was a more robust piece. And that's what has turned into AEO and ADO.net. Java has JDBC. I, I went back and took a look, and I couldn't really find much else besides JDBC that's been utilized uh, uh, heavily. Um, and then there's others. IODBC, that's an open source one. Unix ODBC, that one's a bit on the uh, more open. And then uh, GDA, which is GNU Data Access, is another Linux based ODBC connector. Um, so those are all pieces that the database uh, or, or software would use to try and talk to a database on a consistent fashion. And um, what about Oracle? Is that uh, yeah? Or ODBC? I mean, o ODBC is tends to be the, the primary. Um, they do have their own. Uh, there are other connectors for it, and even on the Microsoft stack, there is even more updated pieces to that. Um, but I didn't want to get into the ORM stuff yet, so I was going to hold off 